I mean, probably slightly more aware in uh, uh, Mumbai as compared to Jaisalmer, possible. But at the same time, the inclination is not really there. Who wants to sift through all this information? Who wants to pour, pour over all these brochures and these lengthy articles and videos and all that? Who wants to get into get into all that? So now, what happens is, which, whichever the places they rely on the heuristic. Like I said right in the beginning, they find out what is their friend doing. I mean, there is always a friend who is uh, who is supposed to be a wizard in uh, investment. I mean, all of us have right. such friends. Yes. So typically, we tend to do that because we don't know anything better. Right. So while we have read something, we have got confused, we have, we have some information, we just ask them, what is that you would suggest that I do? And they suggest something and we do that, not really realizing whether that is truly suited to our particular situation. See, there is nothing like an in, information or a, uh, in, investment or a product which is bad or good. It is only whether it is appropriate or inappropriate. So the same product may be appropriate for somebody, the same product may be completely inappropriate for another person. Maybe in terms of liquidity, maybe in terms of the risk that one is willing to take and so on and so forth. The tax adjusted return, it can be on uh, those kind of things. So the point is now coming to your question, what is that uh, a person should consider? Okay, let me start with uh, a person who is probably entering the workforce. The pro person who is entering the probably entering the workforce should, in my opinion, first should create a liquidity margin. So I would say that uh, the liquidity margin should be to the tune of maybe uh, six months of salary. Okay, the salary is, let us say, uh, 25,000, for example. So at least that one and a half lakh they will need to create for two reasons. One is, of course, it's a liquidity and contingency provision which they are creating upfront. Uh, the young investors, young people uh, at that point in uh, their life, they may have many, many aspirations, some of which may be not very big, but they're all going to be bunched up in the initial maybe two, three, four years of their life. For example, they may want to buy a good mobile. They may want to, uh, I mean, go on a vacation somewhere nearby with their friends. They may want to eat out. They may want to party. See, all of which individually may not take too much money, but these are small, small things which they may want to indulge. Or they may want to give some gifts to their friends, their parents, their relatives, and so on from time to time. They may want to travel for Diwali and they may want to indulge themselves and they may want to fly instead of going. All those things are there, right? So now, where will that come from? So typical person is, uh, what they are doing is they are also, uh, they are also serenaded with uh, credit cards, plastics. Yes. <laughs> so, I mean, most of them do get a credit card, right? At some point. And that is at a very early point. And they start uh, using the credit card and getting into debt. So the first thing which I would suggest people is first and foremost, you get a credit card, but use it absolutely judiciously. Uh, you, I mean, if I if you have to use the credit card, uh, by all means, pay it at the end of the credit cycle. Do not get into that uh, monthly minimum, uh, that payment, revolving credit. Okay. And uh, like I said, the liquidity contingency margin, that much at least uh, one should have. Whatever be the income level, I would suggest at least a 10% of that income should be in terms of some long-term investment. Suppose the, the same example, 25,000 is the income. 2,500 at least you should be in a position to put aside for some in long-term investment. Balance if you want to spend at an early stage in life, I will not fault you. Because at an early stage in life, you may have many aspirations. So that is fine. But as you go along, you need to increase that 10% to 15, 20, 25, 30. At least you have to come to the 30 level. When you are in the 30s, you have to come at least to that 30 level. Otherwise, it is not going to work. And uh, when you progress in life, as you go along, I mean, uh, you will probably get married and have family, many, many more responsibilities and things like that. You may have loans, EMIs and things like that. So if you maintain the 30 plus kind of uh, uh, an investment uh, profile, it is fine. So going forward, I mean, once you reach your, when, once you near your 50s uh, or in the 50s, you should be in a position to slowly increase that. Because what happens uh, to people in their 50s is that typically they would have put aside money for various goals, whether it is children's education mm -hmm. or whether it is anything else or the home loans which uh, they have taken mostly would be paid for or it will be a comparatively smaller sum which they can easily manage to pay. There is no problem. So what happens is the 50s happens to be a golden period for 
uh, any person. I mean, I can I can give you a rough estimate. Uh, a person who is uh, saving in between 50 and 60 will save the same amount as he has saved in his entire life till the age of 50. Yes. So the person starts at 21, 22. What mm -hmm. he has saved in 30 years or 29, 30 years will be the same amount which he will save just between 50 and 60 years. So this is generally seen uh, with most people. So the 50 to 60 period is very, very critical. So the uh, amount of money that one can put aside, and you'll be at the peak of the career, typically. So if you are earning, say, maybe 3 lakhs, 4 lakhs, I mean, huge sum, uh, bulk of it, maybe 55, 60%, 70% can go into that because uh, even a 25, 30% will be more than enough for, for taking care of the regular uh, whatever expenses you may have. And most of the life, uh, lifestyle goals are already taken care of. You already have, you already have a home. You already have furnished a home. You already have a car. I mean, you have most of the things. You don't have to. Uh, I mean, now get into that level uh, in terms of acquiring that. So that is what very very broadly one has to do. Equity debt mix at the beginning of the career it can be higher. Uh, over a period of time, it has to taper down towards the uh, towards retirement. It's. I mean, generally what we suggest is roughly up to 40%, not beyond 40% in equity. 40% or less in equity is what we generally uh, generally suggest. But everything depends on the risk uh, profile of the person and risk capacity. You, suppose, for example, if uh, even if a 30-year-old uh, investor is very conservative, uh, I mean, we, we have to respect that. And we cannot just give 70 or 80% uh, equity for that uh, kind of a person. Probably much, much less equity will have to be given. The person has to understand. We have to make uh, he or she understand that if you take a conscious choice like uh, being a conservative investor and you are a conservative investor, then uh, the number of goals you can achieve or the magnitude of the goals you can achieve will be at a certain level. And we have to be comfortable with that. I mean, so we have to realize that. And that has to be communicated to them. Right. Thanks. Thanks, thanks, uh, Suresh. Basically, thanks for giving your time. In fact, thanks for giving your time. We would again, anytime, whenever uh, we would like to again catch you, catch you back. Because that, that's that's what happens when you talk to Suresh. You go on, you go on, basically, and get that knowledge because you get get this thing. Some very important points you made, uh, uh, made, made Suresh. This was very necessary for investors, uh, investors across because, because we meet a spectrum of investors across and also investment advisors also. We have been seeing that there are new people who are coming in the advisory in the in the in the advisory form and they are also handling with the with handling different kinds of customers and as you as you said it, it's becoming it's becoming complex also it's becoming complex also with with services also yeah so uh thanks thanks suresh uh, thanks suresh for giving your time yeah uh, uh thanks uh, thanks a lot uh we would uh, we would like we, we keep doing these videos and we call eminent personalities like you and take this to our investors and also to our investors in uh, investment advisor fraternities across also uh, and and we will keep on coming to you for with for some questions at some point of time thanks a lot Suresh, for giving you thanks thank you Sandeep. thanks a lot yeah. mutual fund investments are subject to market risks Read all scheme-related documents carefully.